Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. It's time once again for your weekly wrap up. And today we're gonna do a follow up to a video I posted over the weekend comparing all of the various TV stick and box platforms that are out there like Roku and Apple TV and Fire TV. And that video, I purposely uh, focused more at general consumers. I kind of stayed out of the technical weeds, but there are some technical weeds that I want to talk about, specifically a topic here that a viewer, Nick Pham, asked about called frame rate adjustment. And this is actually a big deal for enthusiasts, myself included. And I debated whether or not to include it in the video, but I think it deserves its own video, which is what we're gonna do today. So let's get to it. Now, without going too far down the deep end on this topic, the reason why frame rate is important is because most cinema movies are shot at 24p or 24 frames per second. And this has been the frame rate that cinema has been using for almost 100 years now. It's not going away. And people who are cinematographers want that frame rate because it has a specific look. You get more motion blur. It just looks more artistic. And this is what directors want to use. And even though we're not shooting on film all that much anymore, most of the digital cinema cameras out there that are used in high-level productions are shooting their footage at 24 frames per second to replicate the look of film. And it's going beyond movies now. In fact, most of the high-production streaming shows that you watch are also 24p productions because the people that make those want that 24p look. And the problem you run into, though, is that you've got a division problem. So back in the old days when we were looking at VHS tapes and DVDs, our TVs ran essentially at 29.97 frames per second, and you had to convert this 24p source into something that would play back smoothly at that frame rate. In more modern times here, we now have televisions that typically run at 59.94 frames per second or 60p. But the problem is, is that you cannot evenly divide either the 29.97 or the 59.94 by 24p. So you have to get creative to get this video to play back smoothly and still retain audio synchronization. So the very smart people that work in the television industry came up with something called 3-2 pull down, which basically converts that 24 frames per second to 60 or 30 frames per second by very smartly mixing and mashing frames together, sometimes duplicating those frames so that the viewer sees a smooth image, even if they're watching something that was originally shot at 24 frames per second. The problem we have today though, is that most of the popular TV boxes out there do not give the television the instructions it needs to put itself into a mode where it can most effectively display this 24p content. And the result is on most streaming boxes right now, when you're watching 24p content, you get something called 24p judder. And this will manifest itself when you see a fast movement scene in a 24p piece of content. Typically it involves a fast camera pan, which would normally be smooth if it was playing back properly. But when you experience the judder, it kind of stutters as the camera is moving because the television is trying to keep everything in sync and it just looks terrible. Once you see it, you can't unsee it and it drives enthusiasts crazy. I heard from a few other viewers like Paul and Lars here who have been struggling with this issue for a long time, even with high-end televisions. And the reason why most consumers don't notice it is because by default, most televisions put themselves into this motion smoothing mode that makes film look like video, but it does smooth it out. But that default has been driving filmmakers crazy, so much so that the uh, UHD Federation, the ones that set the standards as to how UHD televisions are supposed to work, have started encouraging TV manufacturers to put in something called filmmaker mode, which turns all of that stuff off. But when you're in filmmaker mode and you've got one of these TV boxes attached to it, you might see the judder now, which you didn't see before. Now, in fairness, most televisions have a 24p mode where if they get 24p content, the television knows how to play it back properly. And apparently the way each television does this is different based on its capabilities. So it's hard to say exactly how each TV does it, 
but for the most part, 24p on a set that supports it will generally play back smoothly. At least that's been my experience. Now, as I often talk about, I've got a beautiful 2016 LG OLED TV upstairs. Most of the built-in apps that I have on that television do support this 24p mode, but I don't really have a way of knowing for sure because the TV doesn't tell me it's in that mode. All I know is that when I compare the Mandalorian playing on my NVIDIA Shield, it plays back smoother with the LG built-in app versus the Shields app. And I noticed this right when the Mandalorian first came out because my TV's apps were not yet updated to support either Dolby Atmos or Dolby Vision, but the NVIDIA Shield at that point had those features enabled. So I was watching it on the Shield and I was noticing that occasionally I was seeing a lot of judder in the frame rate and I wasn't seeing that on the TV's built-in app. And why I think this is going to be more of a problem soon is that as televisions age, like mine upstairs, the apps are not going to get updated or they're just not going to find their way to the television. So for example, I can't get HBO Max on that TV right now. So unless I've got something that can properly give my TV the 24p signal, I'm going to see judder a lot more rolling forward, even though my TV is still perfectly good for video playback. So why don't we step through quickly the various platforms that are out there and how they handle this automatic frame rate adjustment. In fairness, all of these platforms are capable of 24p output, but in many cases you have to switch it into that format manually before you start playing the media for this to work. But this is largely a software problem and it's a problem that has to get resolved between each manufacturer and each individual developer of the apps on those devices because the app is what has to tell the platform to switch into that 24p mode and back out again. So Android TV is probably the worst performer at the moment because there is not even an option right now on most Android TV devices to set automatic frame rate adjustment. The exception is the Nvidia Shield there is a beta feature available right now that will let you do it, and you can read more about it on the link you see on screen here. But this feature is not very intuitive. What you have to do is get your media started at 60p, pull out a menu, and then go to match frame rate. But as you can see here with Disney+, Plus, the screen goes black, and then it just dumps you back out to the media selection screen and you're back in 60p mode. So it doesn't work well across the board on the NVIDIA Shield, unfortunately. Now, in fairness to the Shield, it is capable of doing this switch if an app asks it to properly. Uh, so an example of that is Kodi and Plex. Both of those apps can be configured to automatically switch frame rate depending on the media. But until these app makers start putting this feature into the app itself, we're not going to see a lot of movement here, unfortunately, unless there's some kind of standard that's put together. Now, on Roku and Fire TV, you do have the option to enable this feature, and you can see what the Roku instructions are here. And what you'll see, though, is a little note attached to the support document where it says that it's not supported by Netflix or Hulu. And as you'll see in a second, it's actually worse than that. The Fire TV has had this feature since 2018, but most apps unfortunately don't support it on the Fire TV either. And you can read more about it on my friend Elias Saba's AFTV news site. So what does work on Roku and Fire TV? Well, not Netflix, Hulu, HBO Max, Disney Plus, or Apple TV Plus. I tested all of those over the weekend. But on both platforms, Roku and Fire TV, Prime Video does correctly switch itself into 24p mode when the content asks for it. But the all-star in this lineup is Apple TV. It correctly switched into 24p mode in my testing throughout all of these services. I was really surprised by how well it was working. And I heard from a lot of you after that last video to say how much you enjoy your Apple TV because of this. Now, of course, Apple TV is quite expensive compared to a streaming stick from Roku or Fire TV. But if you're really bugged by this 24p thing and you want it just to work, the Apple TV is probably going to be where you want to land. Uh, because it does all of these services exceptionally well. But here's the rub for the enthusiasts, because as you all know, I'm a big Plex user, and in full disclosure, they're a sponsor here on the channel, but I was a user of Plex long before they sponsored me. 
And Apple TV doesn't play very well with enthusiast level Plex in that you can't get all of the lossless audio and the frame rate switching to work in Plex like it does on the NVIDIA Shield. So I think where I'm going to land here is that my NVIDIA Shield is going to be my Plex device and my Apple TV is going to be my streaming services device because this will work across everything and I don't have to futz around with multiple apps and everything else. So that's where I'm at at the moment. The Apple TV is a real winner if automatic frame rate switching is bugging you, but it's not going to be the whole picture for an enthusiast because its Plex support falls a bit short at the moment. Now, the definitive article on this is that 24P Judder article I linked to earlier at rtings.com. And they have a breakdown of just about every modern television and how well it handles 24P content under a number of different scenarios. And I suspect some of the newer TVs are better at this uh, lack of auto frame rate switching versus some of the older ones. But I think those of you with older televisions are the ones who are going to be dealing with this the most. But this chart does go back a couple of years. So see if your TV is on it and how it handles it. And I would really be interested in hearing from some of you as to what your experiences have been uh, with auto frame rate switching or the lack thereof on your television. I suspect a lot of the newer sets are just dealing with this automatically, but I'd love to hear more from you down in the comment section. Now this week's wrap up is being brought to you by all of you and we have some super chatters to thank who contributed during a recent live stream. They include Brian Parker who made a gold level contribution along with Chris Allegretta and Keith Robinson. We don't have any new supporters this week, but if you want to become a supporter, you can. You can go to lon.tv support and make a monthly or a one-time contribution we support the YouTube membership program with that join button down below, along with my own donor box page that you can find at lon.tv support. And we do Floatplane and Patreon as well. We have other places where you can find me, including my Amazon page, where many of my videos will be uploaded ad-free, along with some fun live streams that we do from time to time. You can engage with the channel with my very infrequent email list at lon.tv email. We've got our Facebook group with well over 1,000 fans of the show interacting with each other. And we're also getting a Discord up and running if you're not into Facebook. So head over there and check it out. And then, of course, we have my store at lon.tv store where you can buy the devices that I purchased to review here on the channel and I'm now getting rid of. The pile grows by the minute down here and I've got to start moving some stuff out. And if you want to be notified when I add something to that store, you can head over to lon.tv slash store alert and you'll get a notification whenever anything new gets added. And that is going to do it for this week's weekly wrap up. I want to thank you all for your continued viewership and support. The feedback on the prior video was awesome. So thank you to everyone who suggested this topic because it was something that I was meaning to cover. And that was a good motivator to make it the topic of today's wrap up. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Hot Sauce and Video Games, Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Thomas Anfang, Jim Tannis, and Handheld Obsession. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.